Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we go to the last phylum that is the corda. last but not the least. In this chordata you will have so many new things coming up. You will actually see that so many things suddenly changed as we jumped from any chordata to chordata. Now so far our journey with the different phyla of the animal kingdom. What did we notice? We started with Porifera. They had nothing. They were acelomates. They had. They were asymmetrical. Uh, they they did not have that triploblast, diploblast, nothing. Then gradually came cylindrics, a little improved. Then came platyhelminths, a little more improved. Then came nematodes, annelids, arthropods mollusks, echinoderms. So gradually we saw that the improvement increased. That improvement in the sense the complexity increased, the body organization became more better, more specialized organs came up, more specialized organ systems came up. Now with core data we will see that the presence of the notochord was something which was very new and something which actually evolved a lot of things. So we will spend good amount of time talking about core data. So in Chordata again we will have subclassification because this in itself is again uh, a huge variety. Again you will have a lot of different types of animals falling under this category. So before we get into all those stuffs, let us first try to see the basic characteristics which define chordates. They have complex body differentiation undoubtedly. Body is bilaterally symmetrical. They are triploblastic made up of three layers of cells. Coelomate because the coelomic cavity is present. What is the uniqueness of chordata that makes it so special? Uniqueness is the presence of notochord. Now because of this uniqueness, all other phylum which we discussed before this, they are all termed as non-chordates. And this is the only phylum which is known as chordates due to the presence of notochord. Now the question is, what is notochord? When notochord is so much important, what it is? It is nothing but a rod-like structure which actually gives a support to the skeleton of the body. Like the simple thing that you can uh, imagine in your mind is our vertebral column. So notochord is a structure like that. But notochord is not the only thing which was unique to chordates. They also had a dorsal hollow nerve cord. So far also we have seen that many organisms had the dorsal and ventral nerve cords running throughout their body. But those nerve cords which they had, they were all solid nerve cords. But for the first time here in chordates, dorsal hollow nerve cords were present. So the hollow nerve cord was something again which was not present in any of the previous phyla. Paired pharyngeal gill slits are present. Till now gills were present but they were present in some organisms it was present in some form and some other organisms it was present in some other form. This was the first time that paired pharyngeal gill slits that means the gill slits were connected to the pharynx. So those gill slits I mean on the pharynx itself you had slit like structures which were nothing but the gills. So this paired pharyngeal gill slits was again another unique feature of the chordata. Post anal tail was present. Now in the previous organisms, anus was the last opening to the exterior through which the ejection happens. But now even after anal, there was an anal tail. There was a tail like structure which was present. Now whatever the, these unique features I am talking about, it is not necessary that all of these should be present in a chordate throughout their lifetime. In some chordates, it is seen that the notochord is present only during the embryonic development. After that, the notochord vanishes. In some others, we see that notochord is present throughout their lifetime. The same is true for all the other things like the dorsal hollow nerve cord, the paired pharyngeal slits or the post-anal tail. For example, a very simple example, human beings, they also fall under chordata. But do we have a tail? We do not have a tail. Because tail is something which doesn't persist in us throughout the lifetime. It is only present in the very early stages of embryonic development. Whereas, if you look at a monkey, this also falls under chordata, but monkey has a tail. So, tail is something which has to be present, but for how long it will be present, that is 
not defined. So it can be present for some time, it can persist throughout lifetime. So these are some of the unique features because of which chordates became special and they were discussed as a separate phylum altogether. They of course have organ system level of organization. They are mobile due to the presence of limbs, not only limbs. I mean, as we talk about the different types of chordates, we will see some of them have limbs, some of them have modified limbs, some of them will have feathers, some will have fins. So there will be so many modifications which are present, but which actually help in movement. So with this basic introduction, let us have a look at a very primitive chordata. I mean, at the very primitive, I mean, this is not a fish, this is not a specific animal. This was the first chordates which were seen. So those first chordates showed this unique features which I spoke about just now. So it had a notochord. So this is the notochord, which is a rod-like structure, which is present throughout the length of the body. So it, this notochord, is found in the embryonic stage of all chordates but it is found in the adult stage in some of them because in some of them it is present only in the embryonic stage and by the time it grows to an adult it vanishes off so this is the notochord and then this was the dorsal hollow nerve cord dorsal hollow nerve cord which was present. So this dorsal, from a part of this dorsal hollow nerve cord, the brain actually develops from here. So it is located dorsally to the notochord. That means it is located, this dorsal hollow nerve cord is located at the back side of the notochord. In non-chordates, that is the phyla which we have discussed before this, this cord was present but it was solid. And in some of them it was located ventrally, in some of them it was located laterally. But here it is located dorsally and it is hollow in nature. Then the third one was the pharyngeal gill slits, which you can see here. The pharyngeal gill slits. So what are these pharyngeal gill slits? Slits. What are the term slits means? Opening. So here you can see that these are nothing but openings in the pharynx. So what is the purpose? Or what are the purpose of the slits? The slits actually help to filter food out of water. Now through these openings the water enters. Now from that water only the food particles are filtered out and then the remaining water is expelled out through these slits. So only the useful materials is taken in. Now in fishes, now we will talk about many different types of chordates. For example, fish is a type of chordate. In fishes, these gill slits are developed into a specialized structures called gills. Similarly, in case of mammals, if you look at the, these gill slits, they are present in mammals during the embryonic development, but later they are no more present. Then the last one was the post anal tail. So a tail like structure which is present again this this is nothing but a posterior elongation of the body that means an extension beyond the anus. Now this tail has skeletal muscles because of which it helps in locomotion mostly in aquatic animals like fishes. If you imagine a fish, you will actually see a tail like structure. So that tail helps in movement. Whereas in terrestrial animals, there is no need of tail for movement because most of the terrestrial chordates will have limbs for movement. So in terrestrial animals, this tail helps in balancing or signaling. What do I mean by signaling? For example, you would have seen lizards. Lizards will have a tail. Sometimes they move their tail. Have you ever seen? They make a wavy like movement with their tail. So that is to signal something. Maybe they are trying to convey some information to their fellow partners or they are trying to indicate something. Maybe the changes in weather or something. So that tail movement in case of um, terrestrial animals help in balancing their body sometimes in their balancing act and to signal or to convey some information. Whereas there are some chordates like human beings where this tail is present only during embryonic development. Later this tail is no more present. Right, so these are some of the basic, unique, important features of chordates 
which has to be present in a cord cordet may be either during embryonic development or throughout lifetime. So that depends from different type from one type to another type of cordet. Okay. So now we will look at some examples of cordata. So here again we have a huge variety starting from fishes, salamander, lizards, frogs, tortoise, snakes, birds, lions, rabbit, cat, dog or human beings. So animals, the word animal for us is are these, right? Because when we say, we say I saw an animal today, what do I mean? We mean either a dog, a cat, a giraffe, a zebra. So they, they are all animals for us because the animals which we have spoken so far, we do not actually come across them in our day-to-day -day life. We do not see a mollusk so often or we do not see a echinoderm so often. But even they exist and their numbers are also huge. I do not deny that. But what I am saying is in our day-to-day -day life, whatever comes to our mind when I think of an animal are all these coordinates. Now you will be surprised to see that a snake and a fish and a human being, they all fall under the same phyla. So that's the beauty of it. They share a lot of similar characteristics. The basic characteristics of chordate which I shared with you just now, they are all common in all these animals even, they, even though they look so different. Now since these animals again there is a diversity here, again they are so much different from each other, a snake and a human being, they are so much different from each other. Because of those differences, a subclassification of the kingdom Chordata was needed. So the, a further classification was done on this kingdom. Now before we get into the subclassification of chordates, let us quickly have a clear distinction between the chordates and the non chordates How are chordates different from all the non chordates phyla? In chordates, a notochord is present which is absent in non chordates in chordates, dorsal hollow nerve cord is present whereas in non chordates it is generally a solid cord and it is generally located ventrally or laterally. In chordates, a post anal tail is present which is absent in non chordates. In chordates, pharyngeal gill slits are present which is again absent in non chordates. In chordates, the heart is placed ventrally that is on the front side whereas in non chordates, the heart is generally dorsal. Now, it is not necessary that all non cordates -card will even have a heart. For example, polyphores, you do not have organs. Platter helmets, you do not have a heart, you do not have separate organs. But even if they have, even if any, any of the non cordates have it, it is generally a dorsal heart. That is, it is located at the back side and not on the front side. So, these are some of the important points of distinction of cordates and... Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.